COVID-19 pandemic, Russia-Ukraine war, China-Taiwan tensions and the Sri Lanka crisis. 2022 has not been a kind year to the global geopolitics and as a consequence not been kind to the world economy. There is a speculation rife that recession could be hitting the world by about next year. But despite all these challenges, India has managed to not get adversely affected. This is no mean achievement given the population and the size of our country. And the world has taken note of that. I'll tell you why. S&P is a global rating agency and has revealed that the United States of America and the Eurozone are likely to be facing recession by the next year. But India is unlikely to be impacted severely. Now, India's economy is not so coupled compared to other economies and the countries across the world, and that perhaps could be one of the reasons. But three largest economies, United States of America, European Union and China, will continue to stall. The International Monetary Fund, the IMF, has said that India's economy stands at about 6.1% in 2022 and is likely to be among the fastest growing economies. International Monetary Fund, the IMF's managing director, Kristalina Georgieva, has said that India is the only bright spot in the current dark horizon and that it will be one of the fastest growing economies. So what the IMF has done is said that India's economy stands at about 6.1% in 2022 and is going to become one of the fastest growing economies by next year in 2023. This remember, this with regard to the challenges that the world has surfaced. Now speaking at the IMF headquarters in Washington DC, Georgieva very clearly highlighted that India was doing well even during the challenging times, the difficult times as they've called it. And some of the reasons are structural reforms, the success of digitization in India, providing access to one and all across the country, or at least that being the initiative. And importantly, that even leapfrogging for the renewable energy initiatives. But importantly, the IMF managing director said that India is set to make a mark on the G20 very soon. Big words there. All this meaning that India could actually just go over China at 4.4%, Saudi Arabia at 37 and Nigeria at about 3%. Now, the United States of America has been projected to now grow at just about 1%. Russia, Italy, Germany already showing a negative. India has already taken over the United Kingdom as the fifth largest economy. It's right now only behind United States of America, China, Japan and Germany. We are global citizens, so you must know what the world economy is right now. United Kingdom, the country most popular everyone wants to visit. Inflation in UK is at about 10.1%. This is the highest of any countries of G7. What does it mean essentially in practice? UK residents are struggling to enjoy even a pint of beer. The £7, the current price has already jumped to £10. It's a high number. For example, other issues. Milk prices have jumped to 33%. Vegetables in a tin or fruit juices are at about 15% already. The fuel costs are set to skyrocket three times higher. And very close to the United Kingdom, in nearby and across Europe, it is the fuel cost and energy cost that's also rising. Remember, Europe, United Kingdom, the Western world had a massive connect to Russia and Ukraine with regard to the fuel costs and export. Czech Republic is at 18%. Denmark is at 10%. This double digit is the highest for Denmark since 1982. Greece is at 12%. That is the highest since 1993 for Greece. Not just that. Even in France, 30% of the petrol pumps have run dry. There are long queues. People are struggling. This, remember, primarily because of the fuel relationship that Russia and Ukraine have had with the Europe and the Western world. Even in Germany, which is the largest economy for Europe, is currently struggling. 600% increase is in the electricity prices. As basic as that is what the Western world is struggling with presently. Let me now take you to the United States of America, the first world, the superpower. USA is currently struggling with an 8.3% inflation. In just one month, the food prices have risen by 0.4%. And therefore, the impact is also on housing, medical care, new cars, household furnishings. All of this has increased. Homelessness is increasing. According to reports estimating that 3.8 million units are missing for homeless people. That also means that the real estate prices and to buy an American home at this point has increased by 20%, a whopping number. Let's now bring you closer home to the Indian subcontinent because how can we not discuss our neighbours and their unpredictable and uncertain times? 
Sri Lanka has had a terrible year. The government changed because people rebelled. But before those widespread street protests that we all witnessed, it was the corruption charges against the Rajapaksa brothers who held sway in the Sri Lankan government. And that due to the negligence that they showed toward public welfare. But while all this was happening, 84.6% was the rise in food prices. There could not be any import of fuel, fertilizer, medicine, all of this affecting basic essential practices. Imagine the scale that the people in Sri Lanka was facing. The island nation of 22 million people and they have been India's friend and ally for the longest time. So it was disheartening, disappointing, sad to watch them be plunged into a financial and political chaos. Pakistan, our immediate neighbours, economy is likely to grow just by 2% in 2023. Now, there have been catastrophic floods that Pakistan residents have witnessed this year, causing a lot of damage and destruction. There's already increasing poverty. But sadly, successive policymakers in Pakistan have focused more on promoting religious extremism, sponsoring terror against India, than trying to bring in investment globally and stability for their own people. And now Pakistan has also fallen into China's debt trap and is also being mocked across the world as a begging bowl for funding. All of this, remember, with successive Pakistan governments focusing less on their own country's downfall and more on Kashmir. China, Asia's largest economy, suffered maximum during the zero-COVID policy that prompted lockdowns across the country and still stands in many parts of the city. As a result, the supply chain hubs were affected, the real estate prices were affected. But what affected maximum? were the citizens of the country. Unemployment rate between teenage to 24 years jumped to about 20%. Even within working adults, the unemployment rate stood at about 5.4%. All of this, remember, with food and fuel prices that were already rising and escalating. Even those who are pork buyers have said they are paying 20% more to buy and eat meat there in the country, in China. Now, India also faces challenges for its economy and is on a threshold. Indian rupee breached the $82 mark, sliding to a new low of 81.9 in September. Monetary Fund still maintains that India's growth is projected to be fastest among economies, but India will have to be cautious. IMF Deputy Director Paolo Mauro said, and I quote him here, that it's quite impressive that despite sheer size of this country, digital transfer program in India is a logistical marvel and has reached even low-income group, appreciating specifically the Aadhaar system. Chief Economist uh, Pierre Olivier has said and projected India's growth rate at about 6.8% for this year. Even Moody's, which is a credit company, said that India seems to be untouched by the rising challenges to the global economy. The Russia-Ukraine war and higher inflation did have an impact, clearly, but does not seem to have derailed the ongoing recovery from the COVID pandemic. So how did India sustain amid all these challenges? Of course, there is a strong political will, but also there are established running systems. For example, an adequate international buffer of the reserves. Then, a sufficient stock of food grains, also adding to a well-capitalized financial system. Technological advances that are in-house made in India, and importantly ensuring amid all this that India still remains a market to the rest of the world. This also remember, the government decided to impose an export ban as and when was required so that our domestic prices do not fall and our citizens do not suffer. Remember this as I conclude today. India and its citizens are known for their creativity jugar. They're also known for their hard work and intelligence. But amid all this, they know, and as the SNP also added, that we like to be friendly with all the nations across the world. But we are not so coupled to be dependent completely. Thank you for watching.